Welcome back to the Element 14 community. I'm Lorraine and this week I'm going to create an interactive light of window for my neighbours to play with. In front of my house is this big bay window that's been brilliant at holiday times to put up lights and decorations. What I want to do is make it a bit more interactive so my neighbours can play with those lights. I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi, a BBC Microbit and two different sets of lights. Some infrared control lights that are very popular on their kitchen counters and behind televisions. So we're going to hack them with a Raspberry Pi and then your standard RGB LED lights that you can control individually and we're going to set up a different scene for each season of the year that people can control the lights with. Let me show you the project in more detail. So let's go through the overall idea for the project. So this is the window and the front garden and the wall and the path that the people can stand on. So these, these are the people that I want to interact with my project so they can see the window and the buttons are going to go here. So in this window here we have two sets of lights, the IR lights and the RGB kind of neopixel but not neopixels <laughs> lights. And in the window then inside the house we're going to have a Pi and that's going to be connected to the two different sets of lights controlling them and it's also going to be connected to the buttons but not directly. In a waterproof box here in the garden, we're going to have a micro bit. So the micro bit is connected to these three pads that the user is going to be able to press. So we need to connect the Raspberry Pi to the micro bit. And we're going to do that by digging a cable into the grass from the micro bit to the Raspberry Pi. We're going to need a waterproof box around this bit. And that's the entire setup. So the micro bit needs to talk to the Pi over serial, uh, but not USB. I'll show you what we're gonna do with this wire. Also on the window is gonna be the vinyl stickers to represent the tree and the leaves and the different seasons. So there's lots of different moving parts to this project, which is exactly the kind of project that I love. I love doing lots of different things. So we're gonna be coding the micro bit, coding the pie, cutting out some vinyl, sticking up some lights and designing some buttons. It's gonna be awesome. What kind of projects do you like? Do you like projects with lots of different parts or do you like to keep it simple? Here we have the micro bit connected to the Raspberry Pi, just really up close and personal so I could test it. So from the micro bit, we have pin 16 plugged in to pin 15 on the Raspberry Pi sending um, signals. We also have the connection from the Raspberry Pi to the micro bit. Uh, which we won't need, we won't need to send a signal from the Pi to the micro bit, but that is wired up as well. We've also got ground and power wired into the micro bit, and these are just pins 0 and 1, just so I can touch them. It's really difficult to see this screen in this kind of light. That's 1, and that's 0, so that's the capacitive touch working. And then we press A and B, and all of this is being sent over serial, URT, to the Raspberry Pi which is great because it's all done over these three wires. We don't need that other wire for sending information from the Raspberry Pi to the micro bit. So we can limit this to three wires without having a USB cable. So here's the code on the micro bit. So we start off by setting our pins to be capacitive. And then I set up the serial pins. So the output pin is going to be P16. We don't really need to worry about the input pin for now and we're going to set the baud rate at 9600. So these are just some test ones, some manual tests uh, on button A and button B, but whatever is pressed, it will serial write that to the Raspberry Pi. So when I press on the pin zero button, it will write zero to the Raspberry Pi and then show zero on the micro bit, just um, as a test on that side. It's pretty simple code really. So this is the user, the user is pressing on the red button, for example, and that sends zero to the Raspberry Pi. Let's set up the Raspberry Pi to receive that zero. So the first thing you have to do is turn on serial communications. So here in interface options, we're looking for serial port. We say no to the login shell and yes to the serial port hardware. Once you've done that the first time, it will ask you to reboot. 
Next up, you need to install uh, Minicon. So that's just sudo apt install Minicon, which I've already got. Then to run it, we go Minicon minus D dev. T-T-Y-A-M-A zero. Uh, you plug in the micro bit at this stage before you run this. So when we go control A and then Z, and we're going to set the speed. So we press P. So we need to set the speed to 9,600. So that's the Raspberry Pi set up and now listening for the micro bit. So when I press those buttons on the micro bit, you can see that they're being read by the Raspberry Pi. More stuff we need to set up with the Pi is the code for the NeoPixels and the infrared sensor for the second set of lights. Next up, we want to install a library to control the RGB lights on the Pi. So this is the library that I'm going to use. I actually need um, pip3 install there. And you run that code. That should just run automatically. Sometimes you get problems with the lights flickering because um, there's a problem with the audio interfering. So you need to go to this path and create this file and add this line to that file. Once you do that, you save it and then you reboot the Pi and then everything should just work perfectly. So I've tested this October 2021 with a Pi 3 with a brand new install from September, I think it was. That's how, how new all of this is. So that RPI library, this audio will get your NeoPixels working on a Raspberry Pi. So I've just connected this RGB ring to the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to test that uh, using the strand test that comes with this library. So it's a really nice test. It just runs through the colors, runs through some uh, animations. I like to test everything on a kind of a small scale like this before I put it out on a bigger scale. Is this something you do or do you just go straight for the big scale? So making the buttons for the micro bit, uh, we're going to be have three buttons. So at the moment we just got these wires you can see this is one and that is zero. But it doesn't have to be um, an electrical connection, it can be just like a pressure connection. So when I press the tip of that, it goes to one. But if you actually just squish the wire, it changes to zero. So that's what my wire is going to be, my button's going to be. It's going to be a long piece of wire, like snaked up in a square. So when you put your hand on the square, it will press. So we just need to make a really long jumper wire. Here are my super duper long jumper wires. I've coded up the Pi to accept when it accepts different serial connections to do different colors. Next up is to test all of this at a distance. So the micro bit is going to be all the way down the garden from the Raspberry Pi. The lights in the Raspberry Pi are going to be in the window, but is having a long wire on this going to affect it? That's something that we're going to test next. Let's go dig up my front garden. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? So this is our house, and that's the window that we're planning to make interactive. So it's quite a nice big window. Uh, the problem is it's quite far from the path so you see that's our garden and that's the path that the public walk on so we need to get some sort of interaction from there to there here's my little helper we've got the string and um, so we're going to cut that measure out the wire and then cut a kind of line in the grass don't want to be too deep um, to kind of hide the wire in the wire is brown so it should be a little bit camouflaged let's do that now Great family team effort here this morning. So I had to do a really quick test because I've got the micro bit in the waterproof case. Uh, I just wanted to see what it would look like. So this is the micro bit on the wall and we've got the light just stuck in the edge of the window there. Um, and then we've got the wires uh, coming out. So when I press red, it goes zero and blue, it goes one. But obviously the cool bit is the light changing in the window. Hey! So, as a big massive tree in the window, this is just going to look amazing. 
here are the infrared lights that we're going to hack. So we're going to attach these around the frame of the window. Um, these are infrared LED light strips. Um, there's no kind of particular brand to them. You just, you just buy them online. Um, what you're looking for is definitely the ones with the infrared remote. Let me show you the other things in the box that are really useful. So all of these lights change the same color. They're not kind of individually controllable. So we have three, four reels here and they connect uh, using these connectors, which is great. They're also um, sticky back. So you can peel off a layer and they will stick to the wall. But they also come with a lot of little screws and attachments for moving and changing them around. Like I said, you definitely want the one that comes with the remote because we're going to hack the infrared signal that these receive. Uh, they come with their own power source. And here is the bit we want. So this is the infrared receiver. So we're going to be pointing at this in order to hack the signal. So when the neighbor presses red outside, I want these lights to turn red um, when they press green and when they press blue. So I really only need to hack these three buttons here but it's going to take a bit more work to do that with a Raspberry Pi. In order to hack the infrared light, so to get the Raspberry Pi to control them, we're hacking this remote. So we need to receive signals from this remote, record them to the Pi, and then transmit them from the Pi. So we need to create both an infrared receiver and an infrared transmitter. And that's what this breadboard here is doing. Let's draw the circuit for this to show you a bit more in detail. So the receiver part, is a infrared receiver and that's just connected to the Pi through three volts ground and the RX pin. So this will receive the signal from the infrared remote. Once we've got those codes, we want to transmit them from the Pi. So on the same breadboard, I've put the transmitter. Um, I don't have to, you'll see in a second, these aren't linked at all. Um, I was just being lazy because I wanted to share this ground um, with the um, transmitter. So on the transmitter, we have an infrared LED, a transistor, and these connect to the Pi over five volts, uh, the transmit pin TX, and of course, ground. And here we have two resistors, one for the IR LED and one for the transistor. This is the ground that we're sharing over here. So these are completely two different circuits. Let me show it to you on the breadboard. So we've got five cables going to the Pi, five volts, TX, ground, three volts, ground, and RX. Here's the breadboard up close. So that's our IR receiver, this big thing here. That's the transistor and that's the infrared LED and you can see our two resistors there as well. The steps for hacking the remote are really long and complicated and I can't fit them in this video, but I followed this really good guide from someone else and it was perfect. It went through all the steps. It's really thorough and they can explain it way better than I can. So I will leave those in the notes on the Element 14 website. I'll include the link to that. I'll include my files for this remote but most likely you'll have to create your own file for your own remote because these just not brand names, you know, they're not kind of common. You probably won't be able to get the exact same one that I did, but who knows, maybe someone else has already written your remote and you'll be able to find that online. So here we have the entire setup. So this is the external wire coming from the micro bit. And here we have the Raspberry Pi connected with those five wires to the breadboard for the infrared transmitting. So this is the infrared receiver for the LED panel and then you can just see the LED lights just there. Uh, let me grab the remote and show you how they change. So this is our remote and obviously we can just change the colors using this, but we want to use the Raspberry Pi. So let's fire up that code. There we go. So we can now use the Raspberry Pi to change the IR lights. So we just need to have a look at the code for that. Here's our code then. So these are just some test statements. I love I love my testing, just doing some print statements. So I start off by setting it all to red. Uh, color wipe is setting the neopixels at the same time. So when we receive a command, I just like to print the command so I know what it is that I got. When it's one, that means it's red and we change the infrared to red and we change the neopixels to red. So right now this is just doing red, green, blue. It changes everything to red, green, blue. But with the neopixels, you can combine those colors together. So you can get the people, the neighbors, to choose their own colors by mixing red and green or green and blue. 
So I want to keep track of what they've pressed and then change the neopixels slightly different to the IR lights. So I just need to write up that code, put the tree up and we're good to go. So we've got the infrared lights and the neopixel lights working now. And oh, there's my children. <laughs> um, so these are the buttons. So there's blue, there's red, <laughs> and there we've got green. So here's the waterproof box and the micro bits in here. It definitely has to be waterproof as you can see. So we've kind of bolted it to the wall and added the three wires out through one of the parts of the box. Uh, we've also screwed some holes in here for this, which is a bit of acrylic um, that we're going to mount onto the wall. So each of the wires will just wrap around a square bit with some vinyl on top of it. And that'll be the touch pads that the neighbors can press. And that's it, the project is almost complete. So here are the string lights. Um, we're just filming in dusk because that's the best time to see these lights. So these are the IR lights that are colored in red. But you can just see on the tree, I've got these string WS2812Bs. So neopixels, um, and they're just tied on with this hook. And there's strings up there with other hooks, just taking uh, the weight of these lights because they're quite heavy. There's 99 of these lights. There used to be a hundred, so it's two sets of 50 wired together, uh, but one was broken, so I had to cut it and wire around it. Uh, one of my neighbors has just arrived, he wants to play. <laughs> <laughs> that was good timing. Brilliant. <laughs> so as he presses red, green and blue, the external lights will go red, green and blue. The... So you just press blue, you press green, but the tree changes into that combination. So red, green and blue together are white. And now it's kind of gone a light green because he's pressed green again. So the tree is a combination of what he picks. Well, the external is just kind of confirming what button he pressed. That's a nice yellow. I really enjoyed this project and it's going to grow over time so the animations are going to change and the interactivity is going to change as well I think. I'd like to add maybe just normal buttons, see how they work, maybe they're a bit more reliable than capacitive touch. And also what about a non-touch way of interact interaction, so uh, like having a camera here somewhere so when people put their hands in the air that's red, when they put one hand in the air that's green. Uh, when they do a, a pose that's blue. What would you add? The code for the micro bit, the code for the Raspberry Pi, where you can buy all the components in this project and more information about me and my projects are all on the Element 14 website at element14.com forward slash presents. I'd love to hear what you thought about this project. Leave your comment below or on the Element 14 community. I will be there to answer any questions and I will see you next time.